You are listening to High School 5 and where real talk is our vernacular. Our third snack today is Trader Joe's Pumpkin Spiced Pumpkin Seeds. Oh my god, yeah, he was going to die. They're pumpkin spiced pumpkin seeds, which is like a little bit redundant. However, I feel it might be fire. Mmm. Mm. Mm, Aaron, these are good for your diabetes. They are, unlike the other shit you guys get out. <laughs> Wait, shit on these pumpkin seeds? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, wow. No way you should feel my diabetes here. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy things, I don't taste any pumpkin spice. Maybe because I'm eating pumpkin seeds. Dude, we had a hostess cupcake. <laughs> it was a pumpkin spice hostess cupcake you get at the gas station. <laughs> This shit tasted like menthol. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was horrible. That was horrible. Oh, that, was my, that was probably the worst thing we had for the pumpkin spice season. Yeah, because I would take everything we had today beats the hell out of <laughs> At least it tastes natural or cardboard, but natural. Yeah. <laughs> like that whole thing tastes natural. Like it was just chemical mixed into a sponge. Smoke is back open, Jerry. Is that Spats? The barbecue? Mm-hmm. Hey, is that how Spats? Is Spats? How is it? I haven't been there. Last time I was at Spats, I was with a friend of mine from Cal. And the funny thing is, I ran into him about a couple of years ago at the Parkway, and he introduced me to his wife. And I was kind of like stuck. I was happy to see him, and I was like, saw him being like, let me introduce someone. This is my wife. And she was like, so when's the last time you guys seen each other? And the last time I saw him was years ago at Spats. I mean, right after this, like 90, 1999, we were at Spats. We had a few drinks, and then he took me to a whorehouse. And that was the last time I seen him inside the whorehouse. <laughs> I left, and he stayed. You know? And I did, I, that whole idea, like, when she said it, it brought me right back to that moment. We're like, oh, shit, I can't tell her this. Oh, it's been a long time. Maybe the night of graduation, maybe the day before. I don't remember. I don't know. When did, where, did, where did y'all meet? Where did you guys yeah, yeah, I, I started. So, oh, you're from LA. Oh, me too. And I was like, you don't really want to know this story. It came back to us like, oh, I can't tell her this you story. Say that. <laughs> Last time I saw your husband, he took me to a place that I didn't know was a whorehouse. <laughs> it used to be across the street from the uh, Andronico's over there by Willard. Mm, that's dark. It was a house. Yeah, by the Andronico's, I know exactly. Uh, you know what you're about? Up the street, uh-huh. the little dead that end. little, yeah. yeah. And you go in. And it was all these women. It was like a madam there, and they bring out all these women, and then they tell you you gotta take a shower first. <laughs> I made it as far as a shower and and a massage. Wait, wait, are we still recording, Jer? We are still recording. <laughs> you know, it was crazy. You know that when they finally closed down, the police chief got caught in there. That's terrible. The Berkeley police Damn. chief got caught in that brothel. BB. And so then they just they just kept it on the low and they just closed down the brothel. I was trying to go to Andronico's, but I just got turned around. He got turned around. He was going <laughs> yeah. to Andronico's to pick up one of them cold chickens. Well, you know, at nighttime, turned upside at, at nighttime when you're too drunk and you go and you go and the deli's closed, so you got to get a whole chicken that's cold. Mm-hmm. The hardship. So just the reality of it to sober you up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so all right. smoke is open, Jerry. It's back smoke open. Smoke is back open. In spats. And then if you go to past smoke, it says the sign, we are reopened in spats. Shout out to smoke sponsorship. And shout out to spats uh, sponsorship. Uh, shout out to smoke. I'm glad you reopened. I'm glad you opened in a place now that has fans and vents so my clothes won't smell like barbecue when I step in there for 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. It smelled like barbecue for the next three days. Even remember, it was raining. And I was like, I'm not taking my jacket in there. I'm just going to walk through this fucking rain. <laughs> because the ja- my clothes, my shirt and pants, I'm going to wash. My jacket, I ain't washing every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that used to be the same thing in like the dining commons. In college, I would go to the dining commons, and I would come out, and I'd be like, I smell like grease and like just like dining commons food. And I hated the smell of it because it was like stick on your clothes so i used to have a certain like set of clothes like a hoodie and sweatpants that i would only wear to the dining commons cold pairs of uh shirts cold pairs of sweatpants and that was it <laughs> you were wearing those the and night. they would go in the corner of the room we're like y'all trying to go eat for sure <laughs> let me change real quick <laughs> it's like I, i'm gonna change before i go eat and meanwhile the motherfuckers behind the counter is like this dirty motherfucker always wear the <laughs> same shit you damn time. right <laughs> I, I just got tickets to go to China, man. I'll be there for the new year. Oh, yeah, he yeah. is. Oh, yeah, Chris. Uh, year of the Rat, 84. Oh, that's what's up. Oh, what's up? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, Year of the Rat. 
It's coming up. Is this my this birthday? Year is on. This year? I, it, w- up? it will be January 25th. Oh, yep. yeah. On my birthday. My birthday coming up. It's going to be on uh, at Chinese New Year's. Are you here to rat, Jared? I don't remember what I am. Probably mm-hmm. year to rat. How the hell you don't know? I, I don't know. know. Man, I got confused, man. Somebody told me that because the lunar candle will be switching and stuff, and it doesn't land on the same things every year because it's based on the lunar thing. So I got confused about halfway through my life. I said, fuck it. But I'm pretty sure year of the rat is correct for me. I know. I'll represent for you. I'm That's here to right. dog. It's the pig right now. Thank God I'm dog. Uh, Chris, I need a letter. That's a lot of tink, bro. Is that tink? Yeah. Let's, let's, if it's a, no, we, shit. Let's, let's, work it's a on, let's pick W. We're going to work on W. Oh, shit. Aaron. Aaron, he chose W. Okay. Are we taking a mindful breath? Or? That's just what I'm saying. Can we know no, when this I'll is happening? I'm doing No, no. I'm talking about Jared. I'm I, was, I was waiting for Aaron to finish taking the photo of me so I could look tight Man, and like I'm prophetic. Man, pictures, bro. <laughs> okay. Mode. You just got to be in your natural. Your okay. Mind. Wilson. Weathered, wistfully, wanquished, wildin', white women. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You are listening to the High Score 510 podcast. You can catch us on the highscore510.com or Stitcher, Podbean, and iTunes. Shout out sponsorship to all those. You can also interact with us on Instagram, YouTube, and on the Twitter, primarily Twitter and Instagram, where you can catch us and interact with us. So be sure to do that. Um, aside from that, we are here with... Well, this is Aaron Grayson, also known as AG3. Coming at you like Kanye Sunday service. And so you could call me Jesus. What's going to happen Unlike if somebody going to get pregnant? <laughs> somebody is. <laughs> Not if it's premarital. According to Kanye, Kanye don't like that. <laughs> no. Come on. We are also here with... My name, Rayon. They call me Ski Lee. The neighborhood heavy CEO... You know. Hey, drink booty sweat, baby. Drink booty sweat. <laughs> I should have chose a different color. <laughs> and we are also here with CM Darby, aka Havana Gold, aka Black Mango, aka L N C H L D Y, all capital, all one word, coming for you. I like that one. Uh huh. He was ready. That was hard. I'm always out here, and this dude come up to me, and he's wearing this headband, hella doofy, his hair sticking all out. He had two shooting sleeves, and he asked me if I want to play. He keep telling me to hold his dick. I like that. Hey, you ah, hold my dick. <laughs> yeah, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> wow. And my name is Jared, aka DJ Art. The D is silent, so it's just Jart. And it also is with two T's for a double dose of that Tink Tink, which we are sipping today. Mm. Shout out sponsorship to the Tink. Oh, sure. It starts with buses. But next, they will want to integrate schools and restaurants. And before you know, some nigga will want to integrate the sweet pink nether regions of your white wife or your white daughter or your dear sweet white grandmother. Do any of y'all know what a BBC is? No! Ooh, you don't want to know. <laughs> Shut out to Uncle Ruggie. Every time. I can't believe you played that. It is pumpkin spice season. Yeah. And miscegenation is on an all-time high. We got to be on the lookout. <laughs> In my connoisseurial pursuits of white women... They love pumpkin spice. And <laughs> seeing as it is. I used to go group them all together to love it, pumpkin spice. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it, if Starbucks do it, it's probably for a reason, right? Starbucks do it because they, they can add more sugar to it. I'm just saying, man, there is a certain correlation to what white women like and what happens at Starbucks. <laughs> what are you talking about? Shout out sponsorship. I love both of them. Shout out to Pete's sponsorship. Shout out to B Town. B Town, Berkeley. You yeah, man. Original oh. Pizza. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you go to Berkeley High? Yeah, man. Born and raised in Berkeley, right? Oh, out see? the base right here I didn't in Berkeley know. High. Yeah. I didn't even know. Can we introduce? Cause we got guests here, Jerry. No, oh, I need to I'm know sorry. more about this guy. I'm guests. sorry. You're talking about a goddamn pumpkin spice, and I'm talking <laughs> about more about the guests. It is the month of October, and it's pumpkin spice season, guys. So I'm just. I don't even know So you were born in Berkeley. I heard we met before. Yeah, oh, funny story. That's what Jared told me. Funny story. So, Rayon, funny story. 
So, Adarius's 30th birthday party. Oh, oh, 30th? Oh, did you take the dime? <laughs> oh, oh, I heard your story. Bro. I have your phone in my, your number in my phone. Uh huh. Damn. Wait, wait, wait. I gave you my number? No, because everybody was there was back? a group text who riding uh-huh. or something like that. Uh-huh. And I was like, which one of these motherfuckers was the one who took the domino? And Dari was like, this one. And I was like, you know, sometimes you got to sign someone up for uh-huh. Nambla or like yeah. some untoward shit. And I was like, I'm just going to keep this. I think you're man pre stupid doo doo. I'm going to look at that. <laughs> hey, that was why it all started. Bro. It all started because they called me outside my name. Damn. So let me tell you how that started. Let me tell you how that started. We were at Jared's house for a bar- barbecue. <laughs> he sets up a domino table. Now I'm used, I play dominoes with some motherfuckers that can tell you what's in your hand after you go around once. Right. Right. They can tell everybody playing what they think. And so here they are, you know, I had a Darius, Kevin Brown sitting there. They talking shit about how good they are in dominoes. And I'm playing with them. I'm like, they're not bad. They're satisfactory, right? They're the same level I am. Nothing special. So we're playing dominoes, and they're like, we got this Grand Prix rule. If you don't score 10 in the first round, then we then you we change your name. And I was like, don't change my man. That's the one thing. I, just don't change my name. If I tell you you can call me that, it's okay. That's fine. Don't change my name. I got my name written. No, man. You man, man. man. Change it to Man Preet or something stupid like this or some shit. It's the Man Preet And I rule. said, look, I'm just going to tell you right now. If you change my name, I'm going to flip this motherfucking table over. <laughs> I, I was calm. I was calm, and they didn't believe me. They didn't believe me. So I waited till the game got good. And, I, and then when I scored my first points, they said my name and the points. And I said, okay. So I flipped the whole fucking table over at Jerry's house. <laughs> Drinks and everything. Didn't care what the fuck was on the table. Just flipped the shit over. It was chicken bones on the table. My dog was trying to grab a chicken bone and shit. I'm like, I you know dog over. should be eating. That's what I'm going to do at Aaron's house. I'm going to flip the Everybody table over. Everybody's looking like, what's table wrong I got. with this nigga? No, no, they didn't look because I already said it. If you change my name, I will flip the table. I don't think they're used to people say, doing Same what, what they, they say. Doing what they say. Uh-huh. And so I flipped the table. And then I told them then, so it ain't over, just to let you know. I stood on that. For like three, four years. If I may ask, what's going on in your heart at this time? Is it like I come back to this revisit it every month? I just have a burning hatred and remember, or is this a daily simmer? Aaron has what? Aaron has the- triggers. We we would say Aaron has triggers in certain names, certain words, certain images, certain combinations of people in a certain order mm. can trigger one of Aaron's triggers. So so I think in this case, the combination of like Pal, Kevin Brown, and Darius all being in the same room, and then Dominoes being present. Okay. Was a trigger for Aaron. So like, it was. And I also, I don't have a, I don't, I, 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 I always say I try to forgive because I could go too far. So I tried to let it go. I really tried. No, I didn't. But I didn't forget about it. I forgave, often. but I didn't forget. Yeah, and then while we're sitting there and everybody's sitting there playing dominoes, and I was just like, man, fuck this game in my head. It's like, I'm having a good time, but fuck this game. They having a good time. Fuck this game. They changed my name. <laughs> I asked them what not to do. It's, here's a crazy thing. No one knew I had the domino the whole night. No, that's the, the thing. Night. So I, on, on our end of it, we're playing a righteous game of dominoes. Yeah, yeah. It's the homie's 30th birthday. We're celebrating. Yeah. We're amongst friends. And we're somebody notices, wait a second, we're short. S- you know, and it took, probably took too long, so already the blame is flying around the table. No, you wait, guys can't blame. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, you guys blaming each other? Say, yeah, oh, like, what, who, how did it, how did it? Man, yeah. we was moving couches out the way. We right. all over the place. Yeah, then the search party started. Party. Yeah. I'll, I'll another part of the party. And it's a fun yeah. party, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So probably having a great time. Having a great time. Fuck, man, we're out here frustrated, Somebody broke, somebody blew the bathroom door off its hinges that night, too. Yeah. Well, homie, of, shout, out, shout, out, shout out to Lil Mike, the homie. Uh, he's getting married in December, but he was in the bathroom, and he was kind of faded, and he couldn't open the door when he was trying to come out. So he started, like, panicking because it was like a small little bathroom. And so all of a sudden, everyone was just talking, chilling, and then all of a sudden, you're boom, and then a whap. And you see the door come flying off the hinges and slam on the door. And you see Mike stumble out. be like, <laughs> and, like, just a look everywhere. He, like, <laughs> looked left. Door. He looked right. He'd be like, uh... He, for the rest Darius of the night, he was, wasn't getting her money back he, after that one. He was trying to apologize to Darius' mama. I was so sorry. Yeah, the mama, I don't his usually do this. Tabs on everybody. <laughs> she, she barely let me in the party. She's so like, that's another thing. I barely got let in the party. Damn. So that's all of a in my mind. <laughs> so you flipping tables at somebody else's house? You really? I flipped table at Jared's house. This is Darius' party. And yeah. Now, yeah. So they missing a domino, and it's in my pocket the whole time. Yeah. For hours. The whole time. So wait, you scored with the domino. I didn't play. 
He didn't play. I, didn't I, didn't play. Play. I, didn't I was slick to playing. Just came through. Here's, <laughs> Here's the crazy thing. Here's the crazy thing. I took it from all said. of them yeah. while they were playing, and that's what that's what made it even more special. Oh, man. They in the middle of the game. They're yelling. They're talking, and I just slipped my hand there. It I'm too. standing around drinking, laughing, talking to them, and I just slipped my hand there and walked out the domino. It's a league game too. It's yeah. a domino players association. Yeah, yeah. Then I heard about the domino game. players association. We're trying to get you know stats is is playoff places and seating on the line. You know what I'm saying. So yeah, but you you got us good. You got us hey, good. shout out to <laughs> DPA. So, so here's the great thing. You want to know how they found out? I could have I could have been a dick, which I, I normally mean, done, and I could have went home with it. Okay. I could have went home with it. I thought about just throwing it in the trash can outside. <laughs> but Jared, Jared, who walked who walked me out? Was you? I was me. I was else. like, bro, you got the domino. No, man. it's me. You talking? No, bro, you you. No one even approached me about the domino. I didn't even know that oh, they so were still playing. Ask no, they had no I mean, idea. we had no, no idea. No, no, no. For real, like Jared said, we were just searching for a long, <laughs> long hours, time. Hours. I'm waiting to the end of the party and I leave. I'm like, so Jared out there talking. I was like, oh yeah. So I'm about to hop in the car and I was like, I have my car door open. The car starts. I was like, Jared, oh yeah, I forgot. I flicked it up in the air. He caught it. And he's like, what's it? What the? Air? And I took off. He left. Oh. And I said, I said. Let them know. Don't ever change my name. <laughs> Damn. Damn, you got to get crazy. that money in the first round, bro. <laughs> Rayon, Rayon, Rayon here. First Rayon. time on the sh- Well, he's been on the show, but, you know, as a first time uh, live. Mike. Yeah, Rayon has his own radio show. Rayon, tell us about yourself. You got a little radio uh, show and you're a CEO. What's, what's going on? Something like, you know, I just uh, manage a few artists, put out music uh, at my school. We do a little radio show every Wednesday, 89.5 KSMC. Something light. I'm just trying to put some music in there and make some money one time. When you going to have me on your show, bro? Uh, I got to figure some stuff out. <laughs> look, to be honest, look, uh-huh. it ain't even about you. It ain't got nothing to do with you, bro. Uh-huh. I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm on other things. We're trying to fix our streaming right now. So lately, I've been using the tool Instagram and shit. So until they get the streaming, I can't get you nowhere, bro. You know, you know, you know, I'll be tight on there. You know that, right? I don't know about all that. I speak to young college students on a regular, man. They know how to. I know they vibe. I might got another show in mind for you. Okay. What tunes y'all? What kind of tunes y'all play? We play everything. My DJ, uh, shout out to DJ Choppers from Oakland. Shout out DJ Choppers. He uh, play anything. We we take local music. We do top forty stuff. We we play any hip hop. Somebody want to request? We do theme days. It's whatever you want to hear. He trying to catapult his career as a DJ and play. So I'm just trying to give him a lane. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What about uh, some Sam Cooke or Bobby Blue Bland? Yeah, Jared, no, we not on that. <laughs> and what time is the show? The show is Wednesdays, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. And, yeah, and nobody will listen to Bobby Blue Bland at 2 Unless you in uh, Sweetwater, Alabama, you ain't listening to Bobby Blue Bland. <laughs> nah. That's just a meal at that hour. At that hour. Hey, man, I, hey, man I'm telling you, some Black, Blacksburg, Virginia would like that, too, though. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get you coast to coast, my brother. Man, Blacksburg, Virginia would not like this that. This is non-commercial That's a radio, school school I just want there. you to know that. Okay. All right. Well, we need Fuck Clear Channel. That's why everybody know that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, shout out to Clear Channel sponsorship. Yeah. Uh, Please. All right. Well, cool, cool. So we got we got Chris. We got uh, Ski Lee here. We got a couple things we want to go through today. Today we got a, another taste testing because it is pumpkin spice season. I don't fuck with pumpkin. Rant, rant. <laughs> no I, shout out to pumpkin. If I'm if I'm correct, I just saw. A, Instagram post the other day of Rayon sitting at a pumpkin p- patch looking real happy and just hey, that was for family my son, man. man. Yeah, see, look at I just up. carved a pumpkin right now. Rayon carved, carved pumpkin? pumpkin. I cut it up. I'm I was shocked. helping little Where cousins they, do it. Okay. What does the design okay. look like? What did y'all do with the insides of the pumpkin? Just this is a trick question? Just asking a quick question. What do you do with the insides of a pumpkin? You compost it. That's real Berkeley. That, man, that's tight. You compost <laughs> it, which there's. <laughs> There's also more than just compost, you know, the, the, the there's reduced reuse uh reuse is the one I'm thinking about. Reuse yeah. about roasting some pumpkin seeds over here. Roasting some pumpkin seeds. Yeah, I'm not doing that over here. I'm not I'm cool. <laughs> Bruh, you can also take the pit, the, the carve the inside, the pulp of the pumpkin, and that's how you get you, you know you may you make some nice little uh some nice little pumpkin pie with that. You also do some candy <laughs> yams don't with mess that. With pumpkin. I don't yeah. mess with pumpkin. I don't even eat pie. I'm telling you, man. Why? why but you don't eat any <laughs> like kind no of pie? pie? I don't eat pie, bro. Why? You eat cake, though. I eat cake, but so I don't eat why pie. Why not pie? Is it what's nah. the fruit? The I, crust? I just, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't eat. So you, <laughs> you don't eat. Right yeah, so like, I do know this. Wait. You do have a problem with fruit. I don't, don't, I don't, fruit. I'm not really with the cooked fruit. My grandma <laughs> make a, a banging peach cobbler, and I don't know that by my own taste buds. People who eat it tell me that, and I know it's good, but I've don't. i never tried it. And that's my grandmama. 
No, no, no. I hear you. And, and that's like in a pastry or something. Any oh, no, pastry. Any, no, 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 any no, no. pastry pot. Uh, Danish without cooked fruit. I said, hey, Rayanna, you want some of this? Man, I told you, I don't do <laughs> fruit and bread together. Fruit and bread don't go together. Not for me. Not really. It got it got to like, be a different situation, but not for me. French though. toast with, 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 with fruit on top. I do that. No, I do the fruit. No, you ain't got to yeah, play. I, say, I saw you eat French toast. I do toast. the fruit with the I French toast. French toast, toast fruit so, on top. so it can't be cooked fruit. You don't like cooked fruit. I don't. Um, yeah, Rayon, you have very particular taste buds. I've noticed, but we're gonna we're gonna challenge those today. We're gonna get, but we're gonna allow you to have your real reaction in, I hope in you real can time. Catch the sigh on the microphone. <laughs> I think I can. I want that to be accented really well. Just really the fatigue with your bullshit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Does that pick that up? You know, Rayon does not eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I do. I've changed my life on that. Now. Oh, so you do put fruit on your bread? Because I was about to say there might be hope for some fruit and some pastry. Maybe you put jelly I, on it. I, I put jelly I on that. Dude, he put the thinnest layer. Jelly on that sandwich. No, I'll put jelly on that now. You seen this peanut butter? That's yeah. all. That's that's one of the the few changes I done made for sure. Like I didn't I didn't fool with peanut butter and jelly until I was 23, 24. I'm twenty five now. Yeah, that got me through some lean lean <laughs> days, brother. <laughs> no, I was straight peanut that? butter, bro. Peanut butter sandwich okay. with the yeah, milk. That'll do it. But that'll I'm not it. fooling with no jelly. That'll do that it. That was a long time in my life. I yeah. changed though. He changed. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see you growing. <laughs> I'm happy to see. You might grow a little bit today after today. What, what about a, um, you know, they have those like Russian tea cake cookies where it's like a little dab of jam in the middle. I don't no. eat jelly filled donuts, none of that. No, no jelly donuts, no nothing. No. no. Wow. That's... I, I ain't gotten to the, to the mode of like biting that and then the jelly come out like. Yeah. Cream, cream donut though. Mm-mm. No. Same. No. It's, so it's the texture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, phobia, not, I'm not with it. I'm not with yeah, it. Okay. Mm-hmm. If it's hard cool. on the outside, you want nothing juicy, creamy coming out from the inside. Weird. That, that, that <laughs> definitely is strange make sure you me. don't Make sure you don't go to jail. <laughs> I can't stand you. Somebody told me this was a sports podcast. Yeah, this is, is a, this is a sports podcast. We're talking about sports for not Jared makes the list. When Jared makes the list, it is not a sports podcast. By the podcast. way, it is pumpkin spice season, my friend. <laughs> he really wants to go off. <laughs> Almost like, just, do we do we let him get go ahead with the pumpkin spice so we can get out the way? I'm not fucking with the pumpkin. Y'all already know that. <laughs> hey, so it's pumpkin spice season, but it also means that in California, it is also fire season. So shout out to all those affected shout by the fires. Shout out to everybody dealing with the fires. And the PG&E. Stay safe. Stay dangerous PG&E, at the same time. Shutdowns, you know, um, it, it's kind of crazy. It's been hella windy it's to, today. It's probably but, uh, still some fires going on right now. I was, I, I texted the homie with a shitty joke, and it, I couldn't watch football in my house today. Mm-hmm. Sunday. Yeah. So I was like, I'm trying to be climate refugee football watcher right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and it's to really think that that is the most pleasant manifestation of that shit. There are people in Micronesia underwater. There are folks in Santa Rosa and yep. Sonoma. Burnt, house burns. Thank goodness nobody has died yet, they don't think, in this yeah. this round, but it's fucked off. So I appreciate you bringing that up, brother. Yeah. yeah that's for sure. No, that's wild, man. And, and it's, it's crazy to think that, like, <laughs> right now, like, I would even have to be bothered in my enjoyment of pumpkin spice by fires in the middle of pumpkin spice season. It is October, about to be November, and we worry about fires right now, bro. Right. I'm trying to live. What world do we live in? I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying it's to go get warming. that pumpkin spice latte and not even have to worry about smelling smoke in the air, worry about somebody's power being shut off, worry about somebody, you know what I'm saying, losing their house. But now I can't even enjoy that in peace. So, right. shout out to, to all those affected. We hope that you guys are doing well. Be strong. And hopefully, I, mean, I just think it speaks to, to where we're at with, like, the whole idea of, like, climate change. I know that's a big topic that's been popping up in, like, politics and society today. And the truthers and the people who are, like, anti-science and, and whatnot. And, like, bro, like, I understand, like, fire seasons occur. But, like, I don't remember it becoming a normal thing for there to be, like, huge fires every October into yeah. November. Like, the not fact that every, we had... Like, a, every now and then. Not. Thanksgiving break week. Like, I was like, man, I can't even go outside of Thanksgiving break last year. Like, that's crazy to me. And if we take time Christmas. out to say fuck you to anybody, mm-hmm. let's give a big, hearty fuck you to pg and E. Yeah, Just shout out to pg and E sponsorship, um, but fuck you, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah shout out to pg and E. You, you keeping me from playing Call of Duty tonight. Not because my power's on, but because I got to uh, refugee my sister and her kids so they can take a shower and charge their phones. Right. Um, a shout out to all 
uh, mobile charging devices uh, sponsorship. We will. I got several different mobile charging devices, and I will shout y'all out. I, y'all sponsor our show, pay us, and I will make sure everyone that listens to our show gets one of those. Because if you don't have a mobile charging device, you should have one. Uh, shout out to uncles, good uncles, because I'll turn around and tell my sister. Uh, make sure they're reading books. You can know you can read a book right now, right? Sun's still out. Mm-hmm. Sun's shining. You read a book. You got a candle? You read a book? No, no, no. I was. It was. It was morning. No, I'm talking about. I'm, I'm Sun just was saying, shining. Some read of book. the some of the greatest books have she been written. Like, yeah, we, we need to charge our phones. How about you just turn them off and read a book? Oh, can I say something? Mm-hmm. What's up? Don't say pumpkin spice nothing again. <laughs> Why? <laughs> just talk about it and go on with it because you keep saying that part and you He's ain't about talking about it. I know. Hey, we have it he going to say it one That's more time. That's what I said. We should just go ahead and get this cup just spice thing out the way. Okay. Because well, he's going to keep bringing it up. <laughs> let's, let's start. Let's start. We're doing, today we're doing uh, candy little snacks. Snacks and candies. You like candy, Rayon. Some. Um, pumpkin like spice edition. No, so I don't. We're going to start with one item first since it is pumpkin spice season. Wait, what is this? So today, this is not technically pumpkin spice, but we have... Uh, we are sponsored by Trader Joe's today, even though they don't know they're sponsoring us. Shout out to Trader Joe's sponsorship. Hell no, nah, bro. I'm not, we are I'm sponsored today. We have some candy corn caramel corn. Yeah, you left the whole thing of candy corn at my house, my ad. I put it in a bag, a Ziploc bag, forgot to bring it over here today. I'm glad you didn't. Graham, man, you got to try that shit, man. Good, man. Tastes like, uh, kernels of popcorn tastes like Captain mm. Crunch. Usually Captain popcorn Crunch. is good for a diabetic. It's low carbohydrates. But for some reason... Usually, usually it's like three carbohydrates, but then it has fiber to balance out, so it turns out to be two. As a diabetic, you, I eat like 12, 13, you know, even push 15. This one is 24, Jared, because it got so much sugar on it. It's Trader Joe's. It's got to be healthy. 12, 17 grams of included <laughs> sugar. This gentrification has got to be good for you. It's got to be. Do I, do I get one of each color? Yeah, yeah there's different colors here. It's, it's Which one did you get? Yellow and orange. Oh, that's bad. I don't even like candy corn. Mm. Why would you even buy that for yourself? Now, I'm not dissing. Shout out to Trader Joe's. They got a bunch of wonderful options. Uh, Jason, don't pass that this way. You can charge Jared more <laughs> rent so he can stop wasting money on this crap. <laughs> 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 Making us eat it. Fucking right. up my blood sugar The levels. candy corn popcorn. It's crunchy kernels of popcorn covered in a sweet coating that tastes like candy corn. Trader Joe's. Filling all your hipster delights. It is a step up from candy corn because when you it eat, is most most times when you eat some sugary ass shit, it's not super super clear that you're just eating sugar in yeah. a different form. Mm-hmm. Candy corn, you're like, oh no, that's just like eating a cube of sugar. <laughs> and <laughs> this, thank goodness, there's some puff corn in the middle that yeah. kind of cuts that a little bit, but yeah. it's you know it's nothing I I'd run out for. So we so see you guys uh, thumbs up thumbs down on this, huh? I'm gonna I'm gonna go three quarters down. I'm pretty sure my answer was already predetermined before. <laughs> which I I'm not with it. Thumbs down. Uh, yeah, I'm thumbs down too because of the health. It actually tastes better than I thought. It almost reminds me of uh, if it wasn't if it cut out just a little bit more sweetness, it'd be like kettle corn. Mm-hmm. I it said yes. the salt with mm-hmm. it, right? Mm-hmm. And I whether it was kettle corn to be honest. Now it makes me think if you would have just bought a bag of kettle corn, well, I'd be happy, happy right now. Yeah. That's real. I tell you this though, uh, I just don't like it from the standpoint that I don't like candy corn. So to everybody that loves candy corn, thumbs up. I feel like I should say that. Okay. I rather eat mm. real corn See, than well, candy corn. That's perspective taking. But See, for me, empathy. it's pumpkin spice season. I'm sorry. I just it's a really, thumbs down. Don't to say it. pumpkin spice Jerry, season. Jerry, I had to do it because Jerry, I had to beat him to the punch right now. Yeah, okay. It's pumpkin spice season. Every so. time. You should have a boom sound. I can't. When is pumpkin like spice season? Holiday season. season. Yeah, pumpkin yeah, yeah. spice season. Or like Let's talk about the Yeah. I give it a thumbs up. It is a hearty, sweet, Crunchy it's snack. How do wow. you weight your thumb rating against ours? Is that like three down and one up, or do you count yours as two? Or how is that? No, one. I'm I'm equal. I'm equal person to everyone. So that's oh, funny. I appreciate you sitting in the taller chair. Yeah, he got yeah. the taller chair. He, he got, got the, the most headphones. Chair, got headphones. <laughs> you know, you know. There's a lot of work that goes into this kind show. Of so around him, you can look shit up. Um, overall, I think that the general gist of our candy corn from Trader Joe's, our candy corn popcorn from Trader Joe's, is an overall negative review. However, if you are a candy corn fanatic mm. um, or a nostalgia for candy corn, this is a good secondary option just to mix up the. Candy this corn. is like the methadone for. Yeah. Her. For candy corn, <laughs> it's to get you off. <laughs> oh shit! All right, well, um, so uh, it is pumpkin spice season, 
I just like I get this like real zen kind of like remember, remember um, the sweaty balls on SNL. I just want to recognize your yoga voice when you say pump. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if I were needing in need of a guided meditation and some <laughs> shitty coffee, then you. I feel really feel like you have cornered the market. Well, anyways, let's get to our real topic today. We are um, getting into. Warriors playoff, uh, not playoffs. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, there are no Warriors playoffs this year, boss. Okay. This, this year's full Golden State Warriors might not be able to dog the Santa Cruz Warriors. <laughs> yeah, not even. It's bad. They can't rebound. They can't shoot. They can't guard. They can't run plays. They breathe and run. <laughs> they breathe and run. And, and the fucked up part, the good part, but the fucked up part is they're playing hard. I appreciate the energy. And as a young player, you know what I'm saying? Give that energy. And when you give that energy and this is the outcome, yeah, it's a strong message. Well, we're, no, we're based in Oakland. Even though we are no longer the hometown team for the Warriors, we're still the hometown for the Warriors in some ways. Yeah, they're still trying to Oakland charge based us in San Francisco. Million. I know. They, they, yeah, they, they moved to San Francisco now, but... But we were yeah. Let's just get into the Warriors. So the Warriors have started out zero and two. They played today. They got blown out. They got the doors blown off by OKC. Without, I don't even know who's on OKC. Who's you know o- what OKC has? They have a bunch of players. Shy, CP3, Stephen Adams went off. CP3 is over there. Uh, Dennis Steven Schroeder. Adams went off. They have several that's... castaway players. Dennis Schroeder. Cast Dennis Schroeder South was, South was a castaway. From I, I like, he's got game. He's got game. game. He's solid. He's solid. He's a he's a solid player. But once they got Trey Young, we don't need this for no more. They Bye. got Gallinari too, and that's they, another person that was busting their ass. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. So the Warriors uh, are zero two. They've been blown out by both teams they've played. Clippers more understandable. Clippers are expected to be one of the teams that are competing for the Western True. for the finals, basically, right? Um, but today they play OKC, which is a team that lost mm-hmm. one of their stars the franchise best player or second best player all time russell westbrook in replacement they got cp3 aging cp3 shy gil gorgori gorius uh, alexander is also there he, um, that kid can play and he can he seems he's showing that he can play a little bit yeah. um and then yeah you got steven adams you have uh who else did you name round you named uh your boy schroeder Danilo, Ganari, Danilo schroeder, yeah uh, cp3 they got some players who you would be like they're like decent players role players you know, you know, a former star, superstar player, but a team that you would think with this Warriors roster, you would hope if they're going to be on a trajectory that we would think or would hope for, would be able to compete and, and potentially nah. win. Nah. And they were down by 30 points from the get. Like, it was like five minutes left in the half, and they were down 30 points. Jared, I'm happy you brought up expectations because I – I think that that's the crux of this mm-hmm. season for us as Warriors fans. And mm-hmm. I'm not talking about we just went to five finals Warriors fans. I'm talking about a Donald Foyle, Bobby Sura Warriors fan. Yeah. They need Mookie Blaylock back right now. We could use – Mookie, if you're listening, <laughs> he's in prison right now. Hey, Mookie, man, yeah. hey, get that yeah. app. You know, download our program. What's he, yeah, what's he, he up for? Uh, drunk driving and killing somebody. Yeah, mm. sad. That's dark. Yeah. A kid, a baby, Georgia. a kid, a kid. It was a family. It was a family van. Like the little and, girl yeah, died. I think right? it was a couple yeah. people. Yeah, something. I think the girl, she was like 14 or something. Sad. But we could use you, Mookie. If, you know, <laughs> if if our dear leader has the wisdom to pardon. <laughs> Bring back Gilbert Arenas been his bad knees. Man, I wish. Bruh. Yeah, I agree. So I, I think expectations and being realistic, like we talked about it um, after the finals and like leading up to the year and expectations for the Warriors, you know, maybe being somewhere between a six, seven seed, maybe an A seed. And like we all thought, you know, they, they'll, they'll still compete for a playoff spot and they should hopefully make the playoffs. But you're kind of starting to realize like if they play, if they don't start learning and that curve doesn't start, you know, bending up they're gonna be really really I, really I, bad i think i like what steve kerr said and he said this is going to be our norm for this year when after the game yeah. shouts out after to the first anchoring game. expectations yeah he he really tried to ground everybody and he said it even before he said it last year like he and he's someone that i think i respect what he say about it because he's been on both sides he won right. a lot of rings as a player and, you know, he, now he's been on the coaching angle. He's also lost. He's won rings. He's lost. And he's like, what we did in the last five years isn't the norm, right? Mm-hmm. He, said, he said that was pretty unexpected and pretty unbelievable. He, and he kept saying, 
I don't expect this ride to keep going up. And so la- after the first game, he said, dude, I just want people to get used to this. This is going to happen more this year. It's like we're going to have some good times, some easy times. We're going to have a lot more of these days. Yeah. And um, There's not going to be any good times or easy times this year. Right? <laughs> Bro, it just don't look good. I've, I found myself questioning who are the people playing. I don't even know what's going That's on. What I, man, like I don't know games, what's going I've been on. Learning a lot of names. I see bro. two people that I've seen the last five years, and then all these faces, and they doing stuff, and I'm just like, "That's not what we're supposed to be doing." I but know that. I, I would know. never think that I'd be praying for Willie Colley Stein to get back. What? <laughs> <laughs> I would never think that would be the case. I'm gonna be but, real. But what, what do you? That's what I'm saying. What are we rooting for? We can't realistically, as Warriors fans, be rooting for a championship. I'm like 500 is looking like okay, that's a goal. But remember, remember the days when you just pick somebody on the other team and just talk hella shit, and that was the win? Like, we're back to those days, fellas. Like, it, it's not the wins and losses column isn't yeah. where, as fans, we should hang our hat. I still, I still think they can finish eighth. I mean, I don't expect Phoenix to stay on top. Uh, yeah, they look bad. I know but they look bad. This wouldn't even be a problem if Clay isn't hurt, though. It, it would still be a problem. Uh, it would still, it would no, still be a problem. You have two people still, that's going to bring yeah. a guaranteed 50, 60 points, would, and then Draymond going to bring a couple, and then everybody else can feel like they don't have that. I two think people. it would. I think they it would still be a problem. Else. Here's the thing. All right, so. I asked, y'all, like I asked y'all. No, D'Lo, D Lo. With D Lo and, and, and Clay was still here, it would, they would be. I think they would be compete, competitive in these games. They wouldn't be getting blown out, right? For sure. Because their defense would be a little bit better. D Lo doesn't play defense. And their offense would be running, still adjusting, but they wouldn't be losing by 30 points each game for over half the game. They're down by 30 points. Like, they were literally down by 30 points for more than half I the know, game. The final score did not, was not reflective and that's, of what that's, it was. It's not even like OKC is scoring a crazy amount right now. Unlike uh, L.A. the other night when they were at 111 at the end of the third quarter. And I was like, oh, I thought the game was over. Like, no, nah, man, that was the third quarter. I was like, oh, shit. I was like, damn. I was like, they D is that bad? The D is bad. Like, all right, so I asked y'all to look up the rosters. And let's look at I, – I, I'm, I'm coming to a realization today after watching uh, part of the game today that it is bad. And this might be a time, like you said, expectations need to be tempered. Expectations might need to just be thrown out the window and, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> sent to the goodwill, okay, because it's going to be worth more there. You got to basically say – what the Warriors are right now, Jesus. and if you look at the roster this year, can you name? You want to hear that? Yeah, can you? Do you have last year's roster or this year's roster? <clears throat> you tell me, brother. Last get, year's give me, roster. Give me last year's roster, and okay. I just want to go over that real quick. Last year's roster. Yeah. Jordan Bell, Andrew Bogut, Quinn Cook, Demarcus Cousins, Stephen Curry, Marcus Derrickson, Kevin Durant, Jacob Evans, Draymond Green, Andre Iguodala, Jonas Jerebko. Damian Jones, Damian Lee, who's not just the brother-in-law of Steph Curry, mm-hmm. Sean Livingston, Kevon Looney, Alfonso McKinney, Clay Thompson. Okay. So you, if you look at that roster and you and say you even go back another year, another year versus this year's roster, can we go over this year's roster real quick? I, I, Cause we gonna have I knew some. This was coming, but I didn't want it to happen. This is gonna be interesting. Draymond Green. Stephen Curry, Omari Spellman, Jacob Evans, Jordan Poole, Alan Smeglovich. Smolajic. Smolajic, I think. Smolajic. Something like that. Smolajic. Alan Smolajic. Eric Pascal. D'Angelo Russell. Willie Colley Stein. Big Dog the Third. Clay Thompson. Kavon Louie. Kavon Looney. Alec Burks. Damian Lee, still on a two-way. <laughs> Kai Bowman, two-way. Marquise Chris. Damn. So when you look at that, I'm holding, how many fingers am I holding up right now? Ten new players. They got ten new players on this team. They're getting them some new niggas. Things have changed. The whole power balance of the NBA, at least the Western Conference, has changed. 
it's different. So anything that you thought was last year is not is not going to take precedent this year. Same reason why I'm like I got to reevaluate what I was expecting the Warriors to do because the Warriors <laughs> what are doo doo. Expecting the Warriors. To I was like, man, it's going to be a transition. You know, they're going to work it in. But I wasn't. I was hoping that some of these young players would step in. You know, be decent. You know, be model role players. But you're looking they're for not. like seven young players to step up. I and was be hoping so. This well, year. and this is another another component of what the Warriors lost is Iguodala and Livingston were two pieces that they're going to miss that people don't realize how much they're going to miss them. They're long, athletic, perimeter defenders who play unselfish, who play within the scheme of the team, but play good defense on a regular basis, right? You lose two vets who can do that. Whether they were declining or not, you lose two vets who were able to do that at a certain level for 25, 30 minutes a game, whatever it was. And now you're replacing that with Glenn Robinson the third. You're replacing that with with Jacob Evans. You're replacing that with Jordan Poole, who keeps getting crossed over by the 16th man on the Lakers roster. You I'll know take what I'm saying? Glenn like, Robinson the first over Glenn Robinson. I'll <laughs> take Glenn Robinson currently, <laughs> the current Glenn Robinson well, the first or well, second. The first is the grandfather oh, you that we the, never saw play. Oh, is the grandfather still alive? I'll take, I don't know, but I'll, I'll take, take him. Right now. <laughs> Exhume his body. <laughs> So I got three points, but let me start with this. Scotty Pippen was on a jump on ESPN with Rachel Nichols, and the first thing he said is, because they asked him, they were like, you know, when it ended for the Bulls, how'd it go? And he said, the biggest problem is the fans have a harder time. He said, the fans have a harder time realizing what, he says, players, we start realizing the expectation of where we are early on, or we know, like, this is going to be hard to make it. He said, but fans get used to it. He's like, in Chicago, they all left. He said it was easier because they all left, but he's like, fans are the ones that have a harder time like realizing when it's starting to close down they are, and their expectations. They get used to it. But, yeah, I got, I got three points about the Warriors. I think the first thing that hurts them is, uh, like you guys said, to piggyback on the new players. Even though they got these young players, their parts don't match. The parts that they brought in, D'Angelo, Russell, and I like, I'm a D'Angelo Russell fan. I was mad when the Lakers traded him, but he just doesn't match. It's like when they were winning, they were this 57 Chevy, right? And you don't go out and go out and get some 1979 Plymouth parts to go in it. And D'Angelo Russell, he's, he's a little better. The rest of the guys are the 1979 Plymouth parts. D'Angelo Russell's one of those newer parts. It's, you know what he is? He's like a, one of those fake 57 Chevy parts you put in the car that other people who are 57 Chevys like, nah, nah. It looks like it fits, but that steering wheel ain't authentic. Like, how, your 57 Chevy got real seatbelts coming over the shoulders. Like, that didn't, that didn't exist then. <laughs> how the hell you got an Alpine radio in your 57 Chevy? That's DeAndre Russell. He's that beautiful part, but he doesn't fit. He's a pick and roll, pick and pop. It's a very isolation player. I not like him. Kevin Durant was a real 57 piece that they got. Okay. Like, it was a real piece. So it was mm. like, it worked. And yeah. like you said, Eagle Dollar, Levison, pieces that work. It yeah. might not be the great piece. One of them might be, you know, a little spark plug. One might be this, but it mm-hmm. made the set 57 Chevy run. Right yeah. now, it is not a 50. Like, it doesn't have pieces. That's my first point. Second point, you guys are going to hate hearing this. The point's going to get worse as it go on. The second point <laughs> that you guys are going to hear hearing is, I think this was a lot of onus. And this is going to show us how good of a coach Steve Kerr is. Uh, you know I already called out Steve Kerr. I know you did. How good of a coach is really? I mean, he came into a situation. Yeah. It's sort of like the Jim Harbaugh situation, yeah. right? He had a predecessor coach who pulled his pants down and said, who want to have a dick measuring contest to all the players in that San Francisco 49ers locker room? And everyone stood back. And then he got fired, and they brought in Jim Harbaugh, and then they <laughs> were tight. That's why Singletary got fired? Uh, that nah, and a couple that came things. out after he got fired. <laughs> but I think probably losing was part of the reason, too. Well, no, he kept him at 8-8. Eight and eight. That was yeah, he kept him at 8-8. Eight and, eight. and he changed the whole mentality. He changed the mentality he got, and he, the culture. He, he, he changed the culture. But then you needed another thing. voice to take it over yeah, the top. Same yeah. thing like Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson yeah. changed the culture. He changed the culture. But yeah. he, he got those guys to believe himself. Limited. They grew up with him. But he was limited yeah. in his offensive knowledge and of the game. Absolutely. And then Kerr came in and took it to the next level. I remember the playoffs. a big win this weekend, by the way. Who? Jim Harbaugh. Yeah, they did a big win. He saved oh, his yeah. job. Yeah, yeah he, needs, he needs to learn how to recruit a quarterback. You play quarterback, you better learn how to uh, recruit a quarterback and yeah, coach him up. a quarterback named Shea Patterson. He the is, first white guy I ever seen named Shea Patterson. <laughs> I was shocked. Shea Patterson? His name was Shea Patterson. I'm like, Shea Patterson is an Irish name. The dude was white. Shea? Yeah. S H E A. Shea. Shea McGill for her. No, no, that's like O'Shea. <laughs> No, Ice Cube Shea, is okay. Shea is Ice a goddamn. I ain't Shea. seen no Ice Shea 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 in a while. Air, Every Shea. Shea I know is black. I agree though. Steve Kerr is not the one right now who is going to, I think, mold these young players and, and force them in the fire. No. I don't know that he's that type of person. No. Um, maybe he will become that. Maybe if the system is so good. Maybe the, the assistant coaches are so good, and the culture and Draymond doesn't have a uh, doesn't have a stroke yelling at him. Um, is good enough to get them to like elevate their level, but we don't know that. I don't know. Something. I think this is telling. 
Yeah, Draymond seems to be pretty clear on the situation too. Like you said with yeah. Steve, like I, the homie, shouts out to Buddha G, let Steph take a PGA year. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Part two had two people that was going to be the onus on. Uh-oh. Steph Curry, who I really like. I like Steph Curry. He's, he's tight. One of, probably the greatest shooter ever played a game. I like to place basketball players into tiers, right? Yeah. Instead of being like arguing over who's the GOAT, who's this, what number you put them, I put them in tiers, right? Okay. Now, of course, I think like you have your GOAT tier. You, you can have LeBron and Michael in it if you want, or you just have one. But then I think there's a, the next level, tier two, right? And tier okay. two are those people who are all-time legendary greats. Yeah. And I think Steph Curry, I had him in tier two, right? With Magic Johnson, with, with Kevin Durant, people like Kobe. Yep. Tim Duncan, right? A tier two player could take a shitty team to the playoffs. LeBron played that Damian last season. Miller. That last season where he was in Cleveland, yeah. he took a team. I wouldn't have picked up those four guys to go to play pickup. And oh, Larry man, Bird, an Larry Bird point. took a shitty team yeah. in college. He took four mm-hmm. guys that wouldn't get picked up in college. Yeah, he was the no real, one knows their names. He was the real Jimmy, which we call it from Hoosiers. Four. He was. He took them to the final four, Indiana State, with four guys that weren't didn't even deserve basketball scholarship. Aaron, this feels like a corollary to the argument, which I feel completely is, mm-hmm. and who you have to consider one on one. What would yeah. happen if it was actually just play, play each other? One? Yeah. And it's so different from a five-man NBA game. I yeah. understand that. I understand that. Yeah. I understand that. And at the same time, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, they dog our guy. Mm-hmm. There's just no way Steph is winning that game. And I love Steph. I put him in tier two. And, mm-hmm. and I hear your qualification there because, I, to me, it is a corollary of that where – if you want to beat this fool up and he's not getting the, we're not going to get the calls, we lose the game. Mm-hmm. You know, even Clay changes that dynamic a bit, but like with yeah. Steph, no. Well, and that's the thing. Like we've seen him create his own shot the last five years, but now it's like, is he creating his own shot because of the spacing, because of Clay, because of Kevin Durant? Like the spacing was unbelievable. Now without that space, can you get your points? Not just 20, 23 points a game. Tell me he's the same level as Harden and. Right. And r- respirate, right. right? But we know the answer to that. If they're if they're keying on him and they're double teaming mm-hmm. and they're roughing him up, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. But he should be able to take a shitty team to the playoffs. Jordan's first eight years, he took a shitty team into the second round. He took some bad teams. Pippen was not Pippen. The the Pippen prime or intern prime is not the Pippen when he first came to the league. Pippen was a Central Arkansas. Tall, lanky guy who kept getting migraines in the playoffs. He kept choking the playoffs. He kept choking. Game seven. I'm like, where's Pippen at? He was one of my favorite players. Wore 33, too, my favorite number. And where's Pippen at? Oh, he on the sideline with a bag of ice on his head. Jordan carried teams. I expect him to be able to get this team at least to the playoffs. Damian Lillard carries Damian the Lillard carries some shit way teams. better than Steph to can the carry the Warriors, and that's mm-hmm. a fact. Mm-hmm. That's so, a fact. We're gonna, like see, we're gonna see. I think. I think Steph is also gonna have to learn to be more gunslinger, like more like Damian Lillard, more he like not. more like Trey Young. He can be. He has been. He lived in Oakland. No, no, no. Damian Lillard grew up here. He <laughs> no, know. How, he got that I know. dog in him. I'm, but, Steph ain't got. I know. That. I'm not saying Steph got the dog in him, but what I'm saying is like when Steph was coming up and when he was starting to kind of change. And be one of the main factors that changed the way people play basketball. The NBA play basketball. He was just shooting from wherever. He did not really care. He was, but the now, space was there too. The space was there, but it was before KD was there. So like, it's not. It was like obviously Clay is a big hit on that, but he was also just pulling up from wherever. As they got better, as they got more expectations, he wasn't just like taking like we don't need to do that anymore. And like part of it is like we're just gonna run and flow. And they got into this True. system. So as they had to break apart this system, as it's been broken apart through the roster, it's been broken apart through the talent level. You have to also break apart the habits that you kind of developed into and he's developed into a habit of not being like I'm gonna be like Trey Young I seen Trey Young just being like that's just gross but 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 (laughs) if Trey Young grew up watching Steph Curry he went through his middle school and high school years trying to be Steph Curry so Steph Curry is the reason why Trey Young's doing what he's doing yes he's older now he's maybe not as spry as Trey Young is but but Trey Young was just pulling from the logo and hitting he's a lot of injuries into that now Jerry yeah if you like, think about it like soccer. If you build from the back and actually play the ball and you score goals, like and, and like the best teams do, Manchester City, Liverpool, blah, 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 Spain, mm-hmm. back when they were doing their run, you don't want to go back to just booting the ball. Trying to boot over. Yeah. Uh, and because and, and I feel like where Steph is at right now, like, yeah, I hella feel you. He could just 
start pulling now from the logo and yeah that's how he's that's how he's going to carry the team and i don't even know that's why i co-sign my homie buddha g shit where it's like maybe he should just go play golf for a year i'm not saying that should go revert back to a lesser version of himself but i think that what made him himself is that in part that version so he should you know start getting back to that and then hopefully it'll open more things up for some of his teammates because that's what allowed everyone else to be more effective and efficient his mvp year the year they won a title is because he was the, the one everyone was keen on from anywhere on the court. They had to worry, so it created new lanes, new spacing for other players that are mediocre. And when you have a lot of mediocre players, those guys weren't mediocre back then. He definitely yeah. not doing none of that. No, but right now you have you have some subpar mediocre. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Get one of these niggers, please. Come on. <laughs> My last point is that is it the end? Because it could be the end because. In basketball, unlike football, in basketball, I feel like when it ends, it ends. And yeah. a lot of people don't know. They think because these people are still here, we're still on our run. But, I mean, I've seen it with the Lakers, seen it with the Bulls. That's what makes – seen it with the Heatles, LeBron and the Heatles. When it ends, sometimes you're in that moment, that four-year, five-year moment, and then it just ends. I think that's what made the Spurs so ridiculous was because it didn't end over years, right? But mm-hmm. they also didn't win consecutive yeah. titles. Yeah. But yeah. It never like they had a longevity of that core winning. They still do. Yeah, I mean they're not winning anymore. They won't yes. they won't contend no, for no, a title. No. But they still they're still competitive. So the mm-hmm. question is, are the Warriors gonna be still competitive? Or is this the end of the championship window? Is it closed? Because, yeah. like I said, I saw it with the Lakers with Shaq. Like, he had a great three-year run where he won titles. See, everyone thinks the run is the championship year. Really, the run is building up to that first yeah. championship. This Warrior wasn't a five-year final run. It was them improving, getting better. It was a getting six, to seven the next year stage, run. Getting there. It was a seven-year run. So it's been a long and a lot of games. <laughs> and I saw the same things with Shaq and the Lakers. Like, we lost the year after we won three in a row. We're going to get back. We're going to add more pieces. They kept adding. They kept adding people. They kept adding. Some of them were good. Some of them fit. But it's just that magical run of that moment was gone. It doesn't mean it won't be competitive. But it was just it like. It sure doesn't look like it right now. Uh, well, you know, it, it certainly didn't yeah. for, you know, for other teams. It's only a two games. <laughs> it's only a two games. Yeah, it's only been two games. I would say that they, they, they should for sure go down to L.A. and see if they got any extra players they want to give up. In L.A. on TV, they be selling niggas. Because we could use some. We need some for show, for show. I'm mad that I need some background in that sound bite. <laughs> I'd take him home, but I have a dog. <laughs> that was Richard Pryor that said in L.A. they be Hey, What school did Jordan Poole go to? Michigan. Michigan. What I will say is it is pumpkin spice, pumpkin Why spice he break, season. break right back into yoga, he boys? Right? He was talking perfectly regular. Uh, and we are spiciness. on to our next... Snack. I wish y'all could see my face. <laughs> <laughs> quick hitters, quick hitters. Quick hitters is our popcorn segment. Um, where we basically jump around, just hop in, give a comment, ask a question, but we have a subject and we just bounce around. Um, you can have multiple takes uh, and we just pop in and out. Quick, 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 quick hitters. <laughs> Antonio Brown wants Derek Carr to either give back or send the Rolex he gifted to him to Tom Brady. <laughs> Antonio Brown, you a cold piece, man. <laughs> you a cold piece. You hilarious. You are the reason. Every time I'm thinking I ain't got nothing to say on this podcast, Antonio Brown comes through for me. <laughs> Thank you, Antonio Brown. You my hero. Shout out to Antonio Brown. Always trying to shut the white man down. Time out. Repeat the headline so I can respond because I think I uh, maybe it's something I don't understand fully. Antonio Brown about to be broke. Thirty for thirty broke part three is going to be Antonio Brown, and they're going to lead it. It's going to be only Antonio Brown. Like, what if I told you a man had guaranteed six or thirty million dollars, but instead of playing out one extra day, he did all he could to be released from that contract? You don't do nothing like that. If you that this nigga crazy. Do we know what Derek Carr's response was? Derek Carr don't respond unless it's people None. criticizing his play on the field. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> so Shout out to Derek Carr's what sponsorship. Are you to say? What, what, would, what would you say in this circumstance? Me? If, if you're Derek I'm Carr. I'm Derek Carr in my shoes. Yeah. You want to give it to a brother? As much as I love God and I'm trying to move the word of Christian and everything, I know how Derek Carr is. I'm pissing on that Rolex and putting it on Instagram. 
I worry about Antonio because I root for him in the same way that your boom sound is, you know, he's sticking to the white man and all this shit. And I want to believe he's doing it from a grounded good place and he's got a strategy in place. And boy, howdy, these past (laughs) couple months. This nigga wild. He has no leadership or role models in his life. Therefore, we need to get some more intelligent men around him some way, shape, or form, because he is lost. He's a lost brother. He is by himself, I can tell, just by everything he's doing. He's by himself. He ain't got nobody to talk to except for Grandma. She too old for that shit. If I was in the shoes of Derek Carr, I would say this to Antonio Brown. Nigga, please. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. New House bill passed by the uh, passed by the House of Representatives makes animal cruelty and abuse a felony offense now. Felony offense? I'm gonna start. I don't. I don't want to sound like a, a asshole or anything like that. But there are still issues within my demographic of people. <laughs> I am a young black man. If you don't know me, and how are y'all putting animal rights over me? Shout out to the House of Representatives. You look like that player head that was so me this shit. Give me my damn money back right now and I don't have no damn receipt. <laughs> Facts. I do appreciate that they're trying to protect animals, um, but like Rayon What said, about us? <laughs> I keep seeing niggas get killed. And it's not funny, but it's like, all right, if niggas is still getting killed and we still talk about cops and niggas getting killed by cops, but now the law passed about some animals, they yeah. can't even speak English. <laughs> They can't yeah. even speak English. Speak English. Speak English. They yeah. can't even speak English. Let you touch one of those police let dogs. Me, and see let me touch a police dog. That's a, a quadruple <laughs> felony. What? They're going to put me under the jail and behind yeah. it. That dog can assault me for no reason without just cause. Yeah. Only suspi- some form of suspicion. Sometimes they don't even have a suspicion. They just let the dog go. But what I will say is shout out to Total um, from uh, Sound Fu- uh, Soul Food Soundtrack uh, for their line. Oh. What about us? If you have uh, your feet on the ground and a healthy dose of self-love, you're probably not abusing a person or an animal. Yes. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And yes. so let's work towards that goal. And if we're picking priorities for legislation, shouts out to my brother Rayon. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's hard for us to hear about pets when we're fearing for our lives. Yeah, we're bringing goddamn turkeys on airplanes talking about this day, goddamn, uh, <laughs> what is it? Comfort. Service Comfort animals. animals. Comfort talking animals. about a damn turkey. <laughs> and it, and I, I let you go with the goat <laughs> on a plane. Because goats are pretty pleasant. And they can wear they diapers. They shit everywhere, but they, they're calm, demeanor. But a turkey is fucking crazy. <laughs> the turkey's not what you want on the floor. No, no, no I don't sure. want no turkey like For that. Sure. And I saw the picture of that and saw a picture, person sitting behind a turkey. He looked like, man, I'm ready to kill everybody on this plane. Make yeah. sure that you go vote because I think that the law being passed is another effect that we have of not voting. I ain't even big on voting, but I keep hearing shit like that. But I'm like, bruh, some yeah. animals. Like, I done seen pets. I done had one in my lifetime and I seen other people with them and I respect the relationship. But like, bruh. It's an animal. Yeah. Let's, let's work on this human rights thing. Yeah. 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 yeah, no, it's funny. I saw this Instagram video of this dude who was going around and it said, what, what do you think people would do if I offered them $10,000 uh, for their dog, like, right off the bat, like, just out in the park? So he's walking around, like, talking to people, like, your dog's so beautiful. I mean, you know what? Like, I just, I need to have your dog. I have $10,000 right here, right now. I, I, would you sell your dog for $10,000? And they're like, they're like, no, no. Everyone's like, no, I love him too much. No. Oh, it's my, it's this part of the family. I wouldn't do it. And he's like, what about 100000 And they're like, yeah. No, 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 no. They're all like, no, no. They say no to like, like white, Latinos. Like, I didn't have no black people there. I didn't know. I, there might have been one brother they might have had. But they're like, no, no, no. 10000 might be hard because I, that'll be like selling yourself for 10000 well, It might be hard. I mean, 10000 Then he upped it. Then the he upped it. it he, he upped it and opened up a briefcase with $100,000. And he's like, what about 100000 And they're like, no, no, no. They're yeah, like, I sell for 100000 So, so, so. Guess who is the one person who did sell their their animal? Who? Part of my Asian brethren. Mm. Asian dude was like, hundred thousand? 
Yeah, let's go. <laughs> honey, honey, we sold the dog. <laughs> Wait, let me Good see that. News. Is that real money? Good honey, news. we sold the dog. She, uh-huh. she got the baby in a holster walking uh-huh. up. What? What? He's like, uh, we sold the dog. I'll, I'll, give the baby, I'll give the baby a kiss. I'll give the dog a kiss and be guys a baby. I'm a dog. Hey, baby. I might sell the baby for $100,000. Yeah. Depending on, depending on who the baby mama is. So. <laughs> Never know. And they're saying no. Yeah, hundred thousand. Shout out to uh, to my Asian brethren for keeping it real when it comes to pets. That's deep, man. <laughs> it's like for sure. <laughs> but on some business shit, like I definitely would have lost out on ninety thousand dollars because yeah. I would have been like, uh huh. Oh, yeah, Dude, yeah. Shout oh, out right now. Shout out yeah. to shout out to Fat Mac and on Fat Backs. He's like, man, I would have said this yes to ten thousand because I would have been worried he would have taken the offer away <laughs> the first time. <laughs> But ten G's for sure, yeah, yeah. You should make that a question on the Twitter poll. What would yeah, you sell your you, dog? Thank you, Ray, I'm teaching them. Put it out there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to see, because there's a lot of universal pet lovers. Mm, we might get people mad at us, though. Exactly. Yeah. No, I mean, just don't, talk about it. You don't have to phrase yeah. it in such a just just phrase way. it as a way as simple as you feel me. You had a pet. You had to our Asian the brethren, the only ones that are. No, righteous see, to sell. This is what happened. Just phrase it. Would you sell your pet for? How much money would it take for you to sell your pet for? Hey, I, I call Shaq a Negro on Twitter, and we got banned for twelve hours. Wow, that you've been banned. That's not the times. first time, right. Rand. Not the first time. I called Kanye a coon last year. They called Kanye a coon. Oh, and they, they actually oh, took away your ability uh, to do yeah, stuff? on Twitter. And then Brandon got banned Negro. once. We've been banned three times home. so far. I haven't even been banned from Twitter. How do y'all get banned from Twitter? Oh, you be putting because titties on there and shit. You be going with celebrities, <laughs> I don't put these on there. Anyway, like, <laughs> they put you on timeout, just like hours. Yeah, they take away your twelve or twenty-four hours. Respond to post a tweet. You can only look through, and you can't do anything. You can't respond, right? You could DM people still if you. I think, or like that's the only way you'd be able to do that's, anything. That's called Twitter jail. I've been on yeah. Twitter for about nine. They put years. us in Twitter jail. Twitter jail. That is a real thing. You 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 come in correct. You will be correct. You I've can't seen say nothing. so much foul shit, and they can always they limit seem, your free speech. They can always seem to like come up with all these people who get uh who get uh their tweets brought up from like years ago. I'm like, well, why weren't those complained about? Why are they still up? Why are they still being able to be visible on a timeline right now? When I just said Shaq's uh, hairline looked messed up, and they said Shaq's open for y'all to roast his hairline because he had a messed up hairline a couple weeks ago. And I said this Negro's hairline looked like tectonic place, and I thought it was a funny joke. <laughs> And they was like, you can't say that about Shaq. It was on the 30th anniversary of Loma Prieta. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was around that time, too. So. And, and they, was like, they was like, you can't say that about Shaq. And I was like, oh, that's fucked up. It's like, because somebody thought it was abusive language. <laughs> Negro. I said this Negro. Nobody says this Negro is yada 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 like a joke afterwards unless it's another person of color. Typically, I don't hear no white people being like this Negro. Like you know, what I'm saying nah, talking about computers, they never uh, in the consideration of in the, use the word Negro. Yeah, in the 30s. I didn't call him the N word. I could have probably. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I could have called him. I could have said this brother maybe, but Negro is not a is not a derogatory term. It's just an archaic, older term that was used that was like commonly acceptable. You need to. It is. It is. It is the meaning in certain ways. Um, so I understand, like if like if somebody from a position of power is calling you a Negro when obviously you are African American or you are black or what is the common like yeah, you know. Can I tell you something about who who is coming from? Yeah. yeah. If you if you was to say this nigga, it'd have been fine. If I had said the N I G G A word, I probably wouldn't find it. You would have been fine because it's more commonly known. Whereas Negro, you ruffle feathers because they're like, whoa! Yeah. See, that's the problem. I guess See, that's what it's actually about. But, but isn't that problematic? Yeah. Is that we're more attuned and okay with hearing this nigga than versus this Negro, which one is derived from a from one of the most terrible words known to our, our country's history yeah. and language? I've been getting back to that, though, Jared. Yeah. For real. Because with my, like, square standard english i'll just say the word and then they shot down a nigger mm-hmm. and motherfuckers be like you can't and it's like that's exactly <laughs> what the you fuck can. it is that's you what I, and that's what i mean please white person tell me i can't say yeah. straight the word nigger and tell me that that's not what i feel so you you right. you can understand me a little bit clearer your discomfort you need to lean into and be okay with well and that's what it is with negro that makes people uncomfortable negro because uncomfortable. it's like it's archaic enough that it has motherfuckers thinking oh cuz they want to feel like they fixed it yeah and so if yeah. they if they fixed it then we shouldn't be using that so right. to speak if you use that oh shit yeah i mean the best time i ever seen it used is when someone called a white person it and not an anger <clears throat> Like I was on the street one day and someone yelled, 
Hey, it's Fra- hey, Frank Somerville, nigga. Dude, it was Frank Somerville. I was done. I couldn't get over how uncomfortable Frank Somerville looked. And you know, he got black kids too, right? Yeah. Oh, I, sure. I sat next to him and Lucas with his kids. Hey, nigga, hey, Frank Somerville, what's up, Frank Somerville, nigga? <laughs> Point at him with two hands on a first Friday. I don't know what the hell Frank Somerville was doing. That's around. Nice. And Frank Somerville just waved and kept going, I was dying. That, yeah. made, me, that made my day. Well, well, nowadays, if you're on the Twitter world, Instagram world, and just in general, the the youth hip hop and just youth world, you can see white people being called nigga, calling each other nigga, calling everybody else niggas. As much as you really want your heart desires, you can go find it because everyone's calling each other nigga now. That's like the new colloquial term of uh, homie or But what or could man. be more American is that like the most endemically black shit becomes part of common part lands. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. the where it's like so clear that like this should not apply to you. This should actually yeah. it's not like a melody you picked up <laughs> yeah. Elvis and you're like, oh no, that's smooth. I can use that. Like it's like, no, you really shouldn't be using this word. And of course it's what motherfuckers we use because yeah. we're the most compelling shit out. Yeah. We we are the we are the dark, dirty secret. We are the the taboo in the blanket. We are the elephant in the room. Nigger in the, the, wood wood pile. In the, the nigga in the room. <laughs> like the elephant in the room. Yeah. We the nigga in the room. Yep. That's what I, I was reading some Du Bois the other week and they this phrase, the nigger in the wood pile, is what motherfuckers would say. Yeah. If it's like, ooh, if something seems like it's kinda amiss or something's yeah. a little it's bit a wrong, nigger in the wood something's pile. not quite right. Mm-hmm. There's a nigger in the wood pile. That was the phrase. That's correct. So like elephant in the room. It's a nigga in the room. Elephants have great memories. No, we gonna get right? to it. I gotta say something. Elephants have great memories. Us as uh, black people, <coughs> the niggas in the room, in the woodpile, under the blanket, we have forgotten too many pieces. Not our whole history. We only remember certain pieces. We've forgotten very critical pieces. Um, due to our own decisions and, and interactions with our environment, but also due to extraneous environmental factors that we don't control being placed upon us. And one thing we've always been good at is adapting to our environment um, and surviving, creating, and having that spirit that makes that environment, no matter how deplete of resources and nutrient that it is, we still find a way to make something of it and breathe life into it, to breathe spirit and soul into it. Mm. And that's what makes us beautiful. That's what makes us amazing. But at the same time, it's disappointing because the spirit that we breathe into our community, into our society, into our, into our uh, uh, embodiment of black Americans has, is still missing pieces because we haven't been able to breathe that spirit and that life into it. And, and so it's, it's interesting because like as many times like as we can blame, blame ourselves or we can blame the system, it's like we're, not, we're, not, we're just in a cycle of going b- bouncing back and forth. We're blaming each other, taking it out on each other, blaming the system. You know, what I'm saying doing things detrimental in our in, to ourselves because we're not conforming or finding ways to maneuver through the system effectively. It's just a it's just a crazy cycle. So it's but it's but it's there's beauty within it, and there's so much more to like be had. So I just find it interesting, like the elephant in the room, the nigga in the room. We need to get back to being that elephant, being the presence that's, that that is domineering, and having that that lasting trapdoor memory so that we don't get alienated as to who we are. Because fuck it, I'll be a goddamn nigga in the room. I'll be an elephant in the room. I'm fine being who I am. We should be all fine in who we are. But at the same time, we should still have an exalting loyal, or royal uh, presence in, in, in how we also you know, stand for ourselves and, and stand in that room. And I think we've, we've allowed ourselves to be commodified in ways or, or just disenfranchised in ways that have taken that away. So, anyways, that's just my my little rant. That's your little soapbox. I mean, that's the reason why I'm wearing my Ken Norton Mandingo shirt. <laughs> Do any of y'all know what a BBC is? So we got closing segments, or what are you? This, this, this is it. This is it. This is it. Yeah, this is about it, man. Um, I think we're, I think we're, I think we're done. Hey, that is our show. Well, thank you for listening to our show. We had some good talk in there. We hope that you guys enjoyed our our, our talks, and um, we hope that you are enjoying pumpkin spice season along with no one's enjoying as much as you are. Um, any last words, Chris? Any last words? Oh, it is Halloween this week, so all those people out there for Halloween, we didn't even talk about Halloween. I don't really care. It doesn't matter. 
Um, but any last words for uh, for your fans, for our fans out there? <laughs> Thank y'all for having me. I appreciate everybody here. All right. you I'll let you later. Take your ass home, nigga. Hey, hey, post me a trade though for real though. Send really really me a deal. Yo, Aaron, you got any last words you'd like to say? Uh, be safe this Halloween. Please be safe and uh, adults. Have a good time, but you know, try to remember it's for the damn kids. But be safe. That's all I ask. Just be safe. If you're an adult out partying, if you're with kids, if you're driving on Halloween, you know. Be, uh, keep your lights on Drive slow through neighborhoods Be safe And check the candy afterwards also Watch out for that weed candy Send it to us if you find some <laughs> <laughs> Alright Well thank you for listening to our show We'll see you next time And we'll leave you with this <laughs> well, you don't touch that man. Jared was complaining about me being close, so after that, I just started making love to the mic. Aaron started deep throating his mic. Bro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't know if it's Richard Nixon deep throat or if it's he trying or to if it's the the old school porn deep throat. He be trying to he be trying to teach Mia Khalifa how to do good sex. <laughs> I don't think I don't think me Nia Hartley, Dr. Ruth, and Mr. Marcus could teach her anything. Are you recording? Yeah. yeah. I was thinking that's high quality stuff right there. <laughs> Stupid. Yeah, Aaron, Aaron trying I'll to get to the ABN. Thing. You know, they need to let me in. Why don't you just start becoming like an editor? You should like create your own tomatoes for pornos. That's what you should do. <laughs> Shout out sponsorship. <laughs> I know you just didn't give me a million dollar idea. <laughs> <laughs> tomatoes for porn. <laughs> tomatoes for porn. Dude, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, seriously, man. Should I go know. by scene or do I go by? You can't. Do I go by movie? You, you could do movies no, you or you gotta, scenes. You got to cut that idea out. Stop what you mean? Beat the, beat the idea out because I don't know where else to hear it. Man. <clears throat> man. All of a sudden, I look up and, Jay, Aaron, and, uh, and Fatback Aaron. Macking on Fatback. Macking on Fatback Aaron all of a sudden is uh, driving a Maserati, quitting his job because he started on tomatoes for porn. I'm going to be mad. <laughs> Y'all gonna be fighting, huh? That'd be a bad look. I'm, we, I'm gonna be like, he Zuckerberg me. <laughs> he Zuckerberg me over porn. That's the first time you ever heard anybody say that. I got Zuckerberg over porn. Yeah! That'd be wild. <laughs> yeah! And that nigga owe me $5!